My daughter and I got our hair cut. She wanted it really short. Turn your head. Turn your head this way. Turn it like this. And then turn it like this. <laughs> she wanted it short and it kept getting in her eyes. So we got our hair cut. And I got mine cut too. It was kind of... I have horns that grow up from the side and I hate it. And the horns are now cut. <laughs> Hi. I'm going to be in summer school. and I. You are in summer school. And I'm going to be five. You are five. Today I'm going to summer school in the morning. And then I'm five right now. And um, I'm going to go my... Uh, old school when my summer school is over. No, you're not. When, when I will go to my old school now. This video is my first impressions on the HTC Evo 4G LTE. This is quite easily the fastest phone I have ever used. On Quadrant, after a fresh reboot, I score about 49.75 every single time. Somewhere around there. No, that's not with overclocking. And yes, this thing is rooted. Zero Max made a super easy one-click process. Now, there's a few things you're gonna need to know after you root, like for example, how to get to Tinian Backup to recognize where your saved data is if you had it all on an SD card. Another thing is, if you can see that, it says tampered at the top, or the bootloader is, or normally it says locked and unlocked. It's actually pretty easy to get rid of that message. The Evo 4G LTE has Beats Audio, and I can tell you that when you have something plugged in, a little icon pops up and says you're using Beats Audio, and when you uncheck Beats Audio, there is a noticeable difference in audio. So with Beats on, it actually sounds better. Like, I have a cheap little $25 speaker system from Walmart that has a little sub and you definitely get a better deeper much better sound with Beats Audio. When you disable it it's gone it sounds more flat. The little icons at the bottom where you drag and drop something into it like for example we'll take Plume and we'll open Plume up and this is by far my favorite Twitter app and it launches. There is a way to change those. It's kind of weird because with the Evo 3D with Sense 3.0 those were separated. They're not separated with HTC Sense 4.0 and when you press home you get this little like five window thing and you select which one you want, which is normal. It's just a different style this time. People ask me about battery life. Let me show you that real quick. It says 22 hours. And to be completely honest with you, I was at Walmart and I had to put on airplane mode because it was burning a hole in my pocket with the heat. That drained the battery down quick. I had a pretty good battery until that happened. And as of right now, I have 16%. So I definitely, definitely, definitely love this phone. The battery on it lasts way freaking longer than the Evo 3D did. I can get about 12 hours hours of watching YouTube videos, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, calling, texting, etc. Moderate use. I'm not talking non-stop heavy use. I'm talking moderate use. I can easily get 12 hours out of this, which is about average to me for an Android phone. With my Evo 3 with the stock battery, I could unplug it at 100% charge at night at around 9 p.m., wake up at 7 a.m., and it would be completely dead. Every single morning, it never failed. So what I would do is I would charge it till it was green, turn it off, and then turn it on in the morning or I would just leave it charging all night long and then unplug it in the morning and I had to charge it more than once a day. I do not have to charge this more than once in a day. I got this phone May 24th and I can tell you that I'm only on my third charge. Today is the 28th and I'm still lasting on my third charge. Third full charge, mind you. So I've actually gotten the best battery life that I've gotten on the third charge, which is normal. If you fully charge it and then let it deplete and then fully charge it, after a while it starts to last a little bit longer and then in time it starts to last shorter and shorter. That's just how batteries work. But like I said, I was roaming. My phone was burning a hole in my pocket trying to find a signal in Walmart while I was getting my hair cut. So I just eventually put on airplane mode and I shot about probably eight minutes worth of recording. As you just saw, I got my daughter's haircut as well. She wanted it that short. We didn't really want it that short. She has not had a real haircut since she was born. So her hair was super long and I'll either upload that on my second channel or add it to this video. <laughs> Wow, that is so different. <laughs> Probably make a separate video on my second channel, which is Josh is Nice. YouTube.com slash Josh is Nice, because it's kind of a long video, and I plan on fast forwarding and showing the before and after. But this camera is eight megapixels, so it takes pretty darn good pictures. And when you're in camera mode, you could easily press a button down here to record and a button up here to take a picture. So you don't actually have to switch from camera mode 
to video camera mode. You don't have to. You just press the button you want and you can take a picture while you're recording a video. It records video in 1080p with the back camera and it records video in 720p in the front camera. Now I did a camera test using the front one and when it played back the audio was only on the left side of your speakers. First off, I want to say thank you guys a lot. I flashed an RUU. It didn't make sense to me. I went to the Sprint store because I was thinking it was a hardware related issue and it was so funny. Pretty much every single customer in that place stopped getting help immediately once I pulled out my phone. They were like, is that the new Evo? And then they are like, let me see that. Let me see that. <laughs> I was like, okay, you can see it. And he puts it down and of course the kickstand is strong enough to hold it up no matter which way you have it. So you can actually have it on the table charging with it like this. But anyways, they were like, how did you get that? <laughs> Because it's only available for pre-order and you can't purchase it in the store. And like, one of the ladies was like, if you walk out of here with my iPhone, it wasn't me. <laughs> Pretty much every single employee was like, you're not getting that phone back. <laughs> what was I getting to? I can't remember now. Oh yeah, I took it to the Sprint store because I thought it was a hardware related issue. And they told me they couldn't find anything wrong with it. And I forgot to mention that it was only the front facing camera that did it. Then I got to thinking, well, I don't have that problem with the main camera, but I do have the problem with the front facing camera. So it's gotta be software related. I was correct. I flashed an RUU, which makes your phone completely stock. I mean, just totally everything. The boot partition, just every last thing on your phone, it gets returned stock. And sure enough, I recorded a 720p video, and when I played it back, it played out of both speakers just fine. See, I'm using the front facing camera in 720p, and now it's coming out of both speakers just fine. I'm gonna whip this out and make a few videos of this HTC Evo 4G LTE very soon. So I just had a bad flash or something from the factory, which is pretty crazy. I'm going to walk you around the software here in just a moment and change my setup so you can actually see. My first impressions on my fourth day of having this phone, I can tell you that this phone, in Flossie Carter's words, is a go. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm still giving this phone a 10. As you can see by the shirt, this phone is still floss certified, seal of approval. This phone is a certified go. My wife has a Sprint Galaxy Nexus. This phone totally stomps on that phone. The 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor. And considering the fact that we're gonna get overclocked soon, I have no reason to doubt that. And this phone overclocked would be simply amazing. It's already amazing. So I don't, actually I don't see how it can become any more amazing. I'm not a Sense fan by any means at all. And in fact, when they release the CM9 ROM for this thing, I'm probably gonna mess my pants up a little bit and install it ASAP and make a video installing it. Trust me, anytime something happens, you'll see it here first on my channel. If not first, It'll be very, very soon, because as soon as I learn about it, if I'm at work, I have to wait till I come home, and then I'll start recording and editing. But when CM9 comes out with a ROM for it, oh my god, Android 404 AOSP, sign your mod. That's enough right there to use your pants alone. Seriously. Ah! <laughs> I am high on Android. I love this phone. Since has a lot of eye candy, like when you flip between your recent apps and then you click on it and go to it, there's a lot of eye candy that is a little cool, yeah, but it slows the phone down. Like at any given time, I usually have about 196 megabytes of RAM remaining. And then when I clear my processes with an app, that I don't have installed, it's called Auto Memory Killer something. I'll try to put it up on the screen. It requires root. Well, it doesn't require it, but you can fully utilize the app if you have root, which I am rooted. I have to have backup installed, and everything's green and ready to go. Okay, let me just switch the camera around. There's just some things you have to see. Do you see what I mean by the screen is absolutely amazing? There's no way the camera is going to completely do this phone justice. There's just no way. This is what I was talking about with the eye candy, is everything is left and right, and when you move the phone like this, yeah, since it just has a lot of eye candy. Look at this memory available. System, 1.18 gigabytes for system, currently at 241 free. When CyanogenMod comes out with the ROM for this thing, that bar is not gonna be that full. Internal, you get 2.24 gigabytes of, for apps. I don't have that many installed at all right now, and I have 1.85 free. SD card, that's the internal SD card on this phone. It gives you 10.6 gigabytes accessible, and I have 10.3 free. When I record videos and take pictures, they get stored on the phone's SD card, which is the next thing I'm going to get to. The external SD card 
It's the little slot that's underneath this little back cover that's really glossy. In this case, keeps that from getting fingerprints and scratches on it. I have a video on this case by CDO. You should check it out. I will put it in the description. It keeps your phone absolutely protected. I mean, this is raised, so when it lays flat, it's not going to scratch the screen up. And when you're holding it in your hand, you don't feel like you're going to drop it. And if you did drop it, all the corners, the camera, everything is protected. Worst case scenario is the screen. But if it lands flat, the edges should protect it because it's raised up a little bit. But anyways, I have a 32 gig SD card in there. And I have a lot of pictures and videos and titanium backup stuff on it. Titanium so Backup changed the interface a little bit, so I'm still trying to get used to it, like what this does, and the search button. Normally you would have to go to Backup Overview, click here, and then search, so I've got to get used to it. That's one thing I'm not really feeling about this phone, is the fact that you have Back, Home, and Recent Apps. Like, when you open up an app like tap -a talk you have this button down here that does not go away. Now you do have apps like Titanium Backup that know that you're running an ice cream sandwich ROM so they put the menu button right here. So it's not down there all the time. But this is an issue because a lot of apps don't really utilize that. Like Facebook, and then when you play Plants vs. Zombies, same exact thing. This button is right here all the time and it does not go away. Like you saw with Titanium Backup and apps like the Google Play Store, they have a menu button somewhere on the screen so that part's not being used up. Now once almost all Android apps become Android 4.0 compliant, then there won't be anything to worry about. Like Plume, for example, this is my favorite Twitter app by far, and I've used a lot, like Tweetcaster, the official Twitter app, and etc. There is no button down here all the time because it's up here. So while it is an issue to me, and I wish there was a menu button, once more apps become ICS compliant, there won't be anything to worry about. So you saw the way that this thing multitasks, you flip things up to kill them. And now you have no more running apps. It does have a built-in task manager. When you bring this down, the settings button's right here and it takes you to all your settings. Like you can turn Wi-Fi on and off, you can turn Bluetooth on and off. Clicking on the word takes you to that corresponding setting and this is your little thing to turn it on and off. Under more, you have the options of usage. And Sprint has unlimited data so you really don't have to worry about using up too much data. So I'm sure it'll go over five gigabytes consecutive. And it gives you a really good idea of which apps are using up the most data. This phone does have NFC and I made a very short video showing off Google Wallet. You can use Google Wallet on a rooted phone. But it's going to show unsupported device up here at the top. See under transactions, you can see that I spent $9.42 at McDonald's. This is another app that doesn't always have the menu button down here because it's up here. Now, when you're flashing your ROM or you're running an RUU to run it stock, make sure you press this, go to settings, and then reset Google Wallet. If you do not reset Google Wallet, you will run into a lot of trouble that I ran into. If you accidentally forget, there is a way to get Google Wallet back, but it's a pain in the butt. This phone is very... I love you. I love you too. This phone is very fast. And to be quite honest with you, at this moment in time, I do think that it's better than the Galaxy Nexus. The only reason I would prefer the Galaxy Nexus over this is the fact that the Galaxy Nexus has custom ROMs like CM9 and AOKP that are already available. Holy cow, I've never seen the agenda before. I haven't really changed this too much. Now please be on the lookout for my How to Root video because I'm going to show you the one-click process that Zetomax made and I'm going to go over all the things you're going to need to know after you root. Because there are some things that you're going to run into and I'm going to make you fully aware of them. This isn't my full review, or at least I hope it's not. I do plan on using this device for a few more days, going through a few more discharges and recharges of the battery, and then giving you my hands down, honest, unbiased review of this phone. There are other things I can cover, like burst mode with the camera, where it takes dozens of pictures at a time. I'm gonna run this thing for a few more days, and then I'm gonna try to make a video doing a full review. My only issue is that with this first impressions video, there's gonna be things that I covered now that I might accidentally cover again later on in the future. Oh, and I don't really know too much about doing app reviews, but this is something you're going to have to check out if you own a Roku device. I can pause my daughter's video 
playing right now. I could switch the videos. I could do whatever I want because it's on the same Wi-Fi network that the Roku's on. Oh, another app that has a little menu button always down there at the bottom. If this had a menu button on it, it wouldn't be a problem. They are currently working on mapping it where this turns into the menu button. They do have that available right now, but you still get the on-screen thing and they're trying to figure out how to disable that. So you press this to go to your menu and then you just press home for a couple seconds to get to your recent apps. Now personally, I'm going to put Nova Launcher on here because I prefer Nova Launcher over the stock Sense Launcher and the keyboard that it comes with is not the greatest keyboard to me. The buttons are nice and big, but some apps like Plume, the spell check doesn't work. So that's, I quickly went back to SwiftKey. I wanted to use the official one for when I did my review, but I couldn't stand it. Honestly, I could not stand it. I went back to SwiftKey in a heartbeat. I'm going to have my video on how to root it maybe tomorrow and they have custom recovery available for this now, both Twerp and Clockwork Mod. I do not run Clockwork Mod on any of my devices or RAW Manager. I strictly use Twerp and Goo Manager because I do not like RAW Manager or Clockwork Mod recovery. Things stay broken for way too long and Twerp updates their recovery and fixes things almost instantly. It's ridiculous. So there is Twerp recovery available. Viper Boy already has a ROM for this thing. I have not ran the HTC Dev Unlock thing. I will. I promise you that. I will unlock this device. I will waited a long time on my Transformer Prime, and that's not going to happen with this thing. Anything that happens with this device, I will cover it, and I will keep you all up to date on it. I am not done with any of my other devices. For example, the Evo 3D, I'm going to install AOKP on it and make that video here soon too. I have plenty of videos planned for this phone, the Evo 3D, every now and then the Galaxy Nexus, and etc. I remain true to my word. I do plan on swapping this phone from my wife's Galaxy Nexus and using that for a little while so I can do a full, I mean, absolutely full comparison between the HTC Evo 4G LTE and the Sprint Galaxy Nexus and which one I think you should get. To be completely honest with you, the Galaxy Nexus is an awesome phone, but once they release CM9 for this phone, <laughs> Let's just say, I recommend you go get this phone. Toast already ported twerp to it, and he doesn't even have this device yet. He didn't get very far with the Evo 3D. I went without a camera and 4G for a couple months. So let's hope it's not so hard on this phone. I'm not saying anything bad about Toast. He apparently is a pretty awesome developer, and all because he couldn't figure out the Evo 3D doesn't mean he won't be able to figure out everything on this phone. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That's all I ask. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. And I want to give a big shout out to all the new followers. I appreciate you guys. I love comments. I reply to each and every one of them that's worth replying to. And I'll see y'all soon. This is what we're Josh doing. I'm out.